I'm Michael Fox, and this is the Prospector Podcast. And I have joining me today, Guy Goulet, who is the president and CEO of Cerro de Pasco Resources. Welcome, Guy. Hello, Michael. Good to be here again today. Yes, it's good to uh, to hear you as well. You guys have been very busy, and there's lots of uh, things for us to talk about. But for those who aren't uh, familiar with Cerro de Pasco Resources, let's give them a quick overview of the company and what you're doing. Well, Michael, just to recap what we own, Cerro de Pasco Resource shareholders, we own the mineral rights on the stockpiles and the tailings of what has been extracted from the Cerro de Pasco mine from 1906 until 1992. Let's recall that project was financed at the time by Mr. J.P. Morgan himself. He invested at the time tens of millions of dollars into that project back in 1906, beginning of the 20th century. They still call this investment the greatest investment of the 20th century in Peru. So at the time, they created uh, Cerro de Pasco Copper Corporation. They listed it, the company a few, few years after on the New York Stock Exchange. So, so as I just mentioned to you, we own the mineral rights on the stockpiles and the stalings, which represent something like north of 200 million tons. And uh, we, we evaluate this is the largest above ground mineral resource uh, on the planet. So uh, we did the intense due diligence in the past uh, on what was processed between 1906 when Mr. J.P. Morgan made the investment until 1992 when they stopped sending material in these tailing. And just in that, in that these tailings, I'm not including the stockpiles here. We estimate if you put the copper, the lead, the zinc, and the gold into a silver equivalent, we estimate at 423 million ounces of silver equivalent, the resource there. So, um, so uh, we, we drilled that lately. Uh, we had a supreme resolution uh, signed by the government of Peru, and we drilled, we performed 40 holes on these tailings. And um, Michael, after those 40 holes, we are exactly where we expected to be, except we're a little bit low on copper. But we will recover on copper on the second phase of drilling, which is outcoming. Yes, wonderful. It's uh, it's exciting that all this is above ground because it's low cost. You have to dig it up and bring it up. It's It's already there. It's already sitting there. And um, it's good to see that the drill that you've done has reconfirmed that what you thought is there is there. But uh, it, it's not a surprise that this is particularly lucrative. Um, the old mining processes going back to the early 1900s aren't nearly as good as our processes today. And as a result, there was a lot of mineral that got left over in a lot of these old tailings. And... Um, it's uh, modern technology is going to allow us to extract those minerals out and uh, and do it quite profitably. Yeah, well, the recovery at the time from our due diligence, we evaluate they were recovering 60% of the metals. Okay, Why is that? You got it. Beginning of the 20th century, the regions were not so good. We read in the reports, the grinding was not appropriate. But more than that, what we read, you go back in time, it was the largest mine in the world. They were extracting from that pit every day 20,000 tons. They were, when you do flotation, you rapidly recover 60% of the metals in the first 24 hours. So go back in time. If you keep the flotation going for 72 hours, you will end up recovering up to 85, 87% of the metals. But as I mentioned to you, if you go back in time, every day there was 20,000 ton beside those two flotation facilities, of which you can recover 60% rapidly. Why should they have wait an extra 48 hours to recover an extra 25%? So they were throwing that rich material 
away. This is why the Quila culture tailings is the richest tailings on the planet. Yeah. Now you drop 40 holes into the tailings. How much of this tailing space has actually now been drilled to confirm the resource that you thought was there that is back there? And how much how much more drilling on these tailings needs to be done? So uh, we covered some 60% of the ground. We're going to add an extra 80 holes. Okay, we're waiting for a supreme decree, which is imminent right now. We're going to add uh, uh, 80 more holes to cover the entirety of the, the surface of the these tailings. So we should have results by the end of the year. But beside that, okay, let's recall those first 40 holes were so steady, like from the top to the bottom, there's no gap. It's in between 1.5 to 2.5 ounce per ton silver, and it's an average of 4.3 ounce per ton silver equivalent. None of these hold as a gap of one meter, like from the, the top to the bottom, it's steady, steady, steady. So we know what will be the results of the second phase. So because of that, we have started the feasibility study. So we're doing mineralogy, we're doing a lot of metallurgical tests, we're doing a impact environmental study, we're doing we're going towards a feasibility study. This is going to be a mine. Yes, it will be, and uh, it'll be a mine quite rapidly in uh, comparison to uh, a lot of other discoveries that are out there. Not that this is a discovery, but it's it's amazing how rapidly this can move forward and um, all at a very low capex because it's all sitting on the surface, which is yeah. which yeah, well, is part you, of the brilliance of all this. You you mentioned it like a. There's no mining cost there. In the mining business, you know what's the problem? It's mining. Right here, it's on surface. Count for $1 US per ton mining. If you do an open pit or even underground mine can cost you up to $200 US per ton. So here in this project, count $1 per ton. Nice thing that we uh, have also, Michael, and we, uh, we uh, it's not a gimme, but we just realized we've got 54 gram per ton gallium so far, and we've got 20 gram per ton indium. We never thought we were going to get so much gallium. United States looking for gallium. China produced most of the gallium on the planet. I would say China produced 98% of the gallium, and China has banned the exportation of gallium germanium and antimony to United States, part of their tech war. So it might be a plus. So we have, a, well, you know, we've got Eric Sprott that have really backed us uh, in tree financing. And uh, uh, we've got those warms that have been exercised. So we've got We've got like $17 million cash right now. We can go straight to the end of that feasibility study. But the metallurgy will be so important. Like if we use the neighbor facility, we expect we can recover 40% of the metals. If we recover 40% of the metals in our model, that means we're going to earn $140 million US profit a year. If we built our own facility, then the recovery will be north of 70%. Let's recall all the flotation facilities that have been built in Peru after 2012 recover north of 70%. So let's see, we assume recover 70%. We're talking here $610 million US profit a year. It's almost a billion dollar Canadian. And that money is going to last at 20,000 tons per day for 11 years. What a great project. Pro yeah. social, pro environmental. And what's the cost of uh, building that uh, that particular facility yourself rather than using the existing? So, we're going, if we use Chinese equipment, Chinese engineering is going to cost us 150 to $200 million. 
if we use German engineering and German equipment is going to cost us north of 300 million. Okay. But the feasibility study we're doing will determine what we're going to do with that. Wonderful. So but it's, when... not, it's not a rush, Michael. Every percentage, like we're doing so many metallurgical tests, every percent we recover means tens of millions of dollars extra profit per year. Yeah, which is uh, uh, which is good, not only to the bottom line, but in, in cleaning up the tailings themselves. Now, you're waiting on the easement. Uh, is that the right term from the government to uh, to make these next 80 holes? And how much more resource would you expect to get out of these 80 holes if if uh, if everything remains the same? Uh, uh, as it has on the first 40. So uh, so the 400, uh, the 80 holes, we assume it include the 423 million ounces of silver equivalent. Okay, so this is so to reaffirm really what you already think. That's it, okay. So we took what was processed over the years and we end up with that number. So it's 75 million tons of material that was processed that contains those 423 million ounces of silver equivalent. With regards to the easement, check that project. I just mentioned the number. We're going to pay to the government of Peru some north of 30% income tax. Let's say 30% on $610 million US a year. It's a lot of money. We're going to assume the cost of treating the acid water. In 15 years, there's no more acid water. We have to reprocess all the material. All Plus, we're going to create the well back in the community of Cerro de Pasco. So the government, like it's just formal. It takes that time in Peru. you got to follow a protocol. But with all those winning conditions, you understand that the government wants to get give us that permit ASAP. Yeah, this sounds like it's going to be uh, profitable for the the government and the, the local community as well as the company. Absolutely, absolutely. So let's um, let's take a quick step back then. Uh, you get the, the permit, you draw the uh, extra 80 holes, you're doing meteorology as we speak right now. What, what's the timeline before you uh, make the decision to go ahead and start buying equipment and uh, actually start processing the ore at this point? So to take the decision will be Q2, Q3, 2026. And then yeah. we decide do we build the plant. It's going to take a year and a half, two years. But the market will pay us on the feasibility study. It's yes, like it, uh, it's to produce. We better get the best formula. We got all the ingredients right now. It's like a spaghetti sauce. Take the time to cook. Let's do step by step. So we're doing the mineralogy right now. You understand? You got to know where the silver is. Is the silver in the porous pyrite? Is the silver in the pyrite? Is the silver associated with galena? It's all those things. So we're doing the mineralogy. We've got some results yet, okay? Metallurgy will have more results coming September this year, okay? Other catalysts, we're going to get in within the next two, three weeks, a listing on the Lima Stock Exchange. Cerro de Pasco, by the way, in Peru, it's emblematic. Everybody knows about Cerro de Pasco. So, uh, so and there's a lot of money in, in Peru, by the way. So uh, we think we're going to get some uh, uh, good trading there on the Lima Stock Exchange. That will help. Mineralogy, metallurgy, and uh, well, the, the great catalyst, it's the metallurgy. Are we going to recover 60, 70, 75% of these metals? So this will come by the end of the year. Okay. Um, one last thing that I, I'm curious about. Um, we've we've talked about everything in the form of silver equivalents. 
Um, but left out of your formula, and correct me if I made a mistake here, was the cesium, the, or pardon me, not the cesium, the gallium that was found in the indium that was found on in the tailings as well. As you go through the meteorology and head into the feasibility, uh, will there be a dollar value put on on those minerals as well? And can that increase the uh, the yearly profitability, or is that already being baked into those numbers? No. So if you were, we did not put anywhere the the gallium in the indium. So from our model, with like a very conservative price of metals, we've got an in situ value of a hundred and sixty nine dollar US per ton. If you include the indium and the gallium, then you go just a little north of two hundred dollars U.S. per ton. So it's uh, it's got the potential of uh, uh, boosting the profitability up even further. Then, yeah, yeah, it, it can increase drastically, but it's not a gimme yet. A lot of work to do on the the extraction of gallium and the indium. And that'll be, those uh, processes will uh, be included in the feasibility, I assume. Exact, exact. Wonderful. Well, exciting times for this company. You've gone a long ways in a short period of time already. Um, looking forward to uh, to seeing the, the results of the remaining drill holes and the meteorology uh, coming this fall. The sky's the limit, I think, on this one. This one's... Uh, this one's a, a big time winner for everybody from the company all the way up to the state. So um, looking forward to uh, talking further about this. And if people want to uh, follow the uh, Cerro de Pasco resources story, how best do they do it, Guy? Well, they go on our website and that's the best way to find the, the to follow us here. Wonderful. I will include the website at the uh, bottom of the uh description of uh, this podcast uh, on our channels. And uh, I uh, I recommend everybody take a good hard look at this one. Uh, uh, this one's got a lot of legs, folks. Thanks very much for the time, Guy, and I look forward to uh, another update uh, later in the fall when those venerological tests come out. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Thanks for the invitation. Good You're night. welcome. Bye-bye. Sarah DePasco Resources is a paid sponsor of the Prospector News. The host owns shares in Sarah DePasco Resources, bought at the market for investment purposes. The Prospector News podcast is for educational purposes only. The opinions expressed are those of the participants and are not to be taken as investment advice. Listeners need to do their own due diligence and seek advice of a licensed investment advisor.